Hey there humans and fur babies, welcome back to Inside the Round. I've done a few videos now and in each video I've changed the background. That's because I'm still not sure where the best background is for me to be filming. I do have a junk room upstairs that I had contemplated turning into a filming room because then I can make a nice background and I can leave all my junk there because at the moment I've got projects all over the house which is another reason why I keep changing the location of my background because I've got piles of crap all over the house. So that is a project that I'm gonna be working on. I'm just not sure when. So for the moment, you're just gonna to have to put up with the random backgrounds that I'm doing. I watch a lot of YouTube. I think it's such a great platform for people to put up their passions. I watch everything from restoration videos, makeup tutorials, doll repaint videos, true crime, everything. The ones that I find the most entertaining, I would say, are the ones that are a little bit more conversational. So that's what I'm trying to do. This video is make it a little bit more conversational, like I'm actually talking directly to you and I'm not being like lecturing and saying, this is what I did, follow what I do. So that's what I'm attempting to do, but I'm still getting comfortable in front of the camera. So let's get into the video. Now that you've got all that background crap that is really unimportant. In this week's video, I'm making some deck chairs for my house. I recently went on a trip to Guatemala and I was so inspired by the incredible textiles that were over there. And when I found these textiles in the shop, I just immediately knew I had to make some deck chairs. So I went online and I found a project that somebody else had done with all the measurements and I tweaked them a little bit and the first one that I did was a bit of a disaster. Even though a few people had done the project and said, yeah, it works, it's awesome. I sat on it and it collapsed and I hurt my finger. It's actually gotten a bit better now because it's been a few weeks, but it looked like it was gonna fall off. I can link the original video that I downloaded. It didn't really work. First attempt was a bit of a disaster, but then I used it as like a testing one. And so the second one is the one I'm gonna be showing you. So stay tuned for the deck chairs. As you know, I live in Bali and we're a little bit limited here with the resources that we have. So in the original project, the wood that was required, I couldn't get here. I literally couldn't even get a two by one that was the same size and that was straight. So going through the wood that was available to me at the, at the hardware store, I had a lot of trouble finding straight pieces. But you know, I made it work. So as this is a collapsible deck chair, you basically are creating a frame like that. So then you can fold it flat. So when I talk about the base and the back, the base is the seat bit and this is the back bit. Clear? So for the backrest frame, which is this one, I cut two 48 inch pieces and two 21 by three quarter inches and one 22 and three quarter inch piece. For the seat frame, I cut two 44 inch pieces, two 20 and a quarter inch pieces and four 22 inch pieces. For the backrest, I needed to drill a hole 16 inches from the base of the frame and 26.5 inches from the base of the frame. For the seat frame, I needed to drill a 13 inch hole from the top. So basically, the 16 inch hole and the 13 inch hole are where these two are gonna connect and that's what's gonna hinge them. So we need to use a bolt for this so it has movement as opposed to a screw which is gonna lock it in. So you need to find a drill bit that's big enough that's gonna fit your bolt afterwards. So after marking all the holes, I drilled them all and this is what we look like. So the two groups are the backrest frame and the seat frame. The smaller 15 inch pieces are going to be the adjuster. So when you've got this and you want to go angle it a little, a little bit like that or make it a bit more straight, you need something here that's going to sit on this bit here to hold it in place. So we've got 15 inch pieces that are going to go down with a dowel across. It all sounds really complicated but it's actually really simple. So at the top of the backrest and at the base of the seat frame, we're going to put two horizontal pieces 
that are going to be a centimeter spaced apart. This is where the fabric's gonna go through and then we're gonna loop in a bit of dowel so it can't come out, but you can take it out for later and wash the fabric or replace the fabric if you want, as opposed to using a staple gun, which is just gonna make it secure. After drilling the holes for the screws, I countersunk a little bit with a drill that's a little bit bigger, so the screws are gonna sit flush with the wood. So with these two pieces done, I just check that they fit in together well before I put the slats for the adjuster on the bottom of the seat frame. The original project instructions that I saw, the adjuster dowel was a quarter of an inch, which even at the time I thought, that's pretty little. I don't know how that's gonna hold up the seat. So that's the piece that when I sat on the chair, it snapped in half. When I came back the second time around, I got a one inch dowel, so it's very strong. So in order to get the one inch dowel through those two adjuster pieces, I needed to cut quite a big hole. I needed to get a drill bit that had normal drill bit in the center, and then it's got these discs that go around it, these teeth, to cut big holes. So now that all this is glued and screwed and everything, I'm going to stain it all with the walnut stain. While all that's drying, I get to the fabric. So we want a finished piece of 47 inches with a two inch turnover on either end that's open on either end so the dowel can fit through it and it's 22 inches wide. So this is the beautiful footloom fabric I bought from Guatemala. Footloom fabric is basically hand woven. They also call it petal loom. So you've got the warp yarns, which are the long yarns, which are the length of the fabric, and then the weft yarns, which go across, and that's how they start weaving. Aquí estamos en Oaxaca viendo el telar y el vestido es verdaderamente maravilloso. So this is an ikat fabric. So what they do is, uh, there's two different ways to do it. You can either dye the warp yarn or you dye the weft yarn. So you, you clump all of the yarns together and you tie it off and make a motif. And then you dye it and then you take off those bits you've blocked off and you dye in another colour and you block off other bits and dye another colour. That way you get a multicoloured motif on the yarn and then you weave it as opposed to dyeing or printing the fabric. It's on the yarn before you actually weave it. So this is a very long process. Let's put the seat together. Let's slip the base and the top in together. So the holes that we drilled, the 16 inch hole and the 13 inch hole line up and then we're gonna put in the bolts. So you wanna put a washer between the bolt and the wood, a washer between the wood and a washer between the bolt and the nut. After we put that together, I lift it up and put the adjuster bits in. Now we can thread through the fabric and the dowel. And basically the chair's done. And this is how they look.
Guys, thanks so much for watching this video. You know, it's my goal to inspire you guys to recycle, upcycle, or create, and hopefully give you some different content to what else is available there, out there on YouTube. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't subscribed, subscribe, because I do new videos every week, and they're constantly changing. As I said, I'm gonna work on my junk room into being my filming room, and I'm also working on a couple of other series, one called Pimp My Pad, which my friends just recently repainted her villa, and I'm gonna help her to style and do some DIYs for her new space. And again, if you've got any things lying around the house that you don't know what to do with, or something that you wanna upcycle that you're just not ready to throw away, but you need some advice on what to do, please leave a comment below, or DM me at Inside the Round on Instagram, and I'll see what I can do to help you out. Thanks again, and until next week, stay creative.